Yeah, we can record now. Like... I hit record now, so at least someone sees this this gamer beating you over the head occasionally. <laughs> and and this weird bust. Here, put your hand down. Put your hand down. You get to get the bust effect. There you go. Now it looks like you're just like a a space ninety nine. Okay, there we there go. There we go. There we go. Now That's you're better. That's kind better. Of, kind of a Bond villain. A trippy bond, <laughs> space 99 style bond welcome villain. to my show. hey at least layer. the earth is rotating in the right direction this, this might Sometimes be actual they spin westward yeah, which yeah is i just sit there and think about it <laughs> I mean, this might be actual video i don't know <laughs> nah, yeah, nah there's no clouds <laughs> no also the sun's flare is very symmetrical that's jane jj abrams universe <laughs> yeah i mean you could get video like that i suppose time lapse I'm after the. You have to be pretty high orbit to see the Earth that much, though. I followed my picking up the Marvel movies with uh, getting Blu-raying up my Star Wars finally. So now I've got I've got all of the Star Wars movies on Blu-ray, all ten of them. No, you don't. All ten. You don't have the first three. Hmm. I well, I got don't have the first three. Are you? Are wait? Are were you? This is the point you were making that you don't count Solo as a movie. No, I got Solo. I don't have Rise of Skywalker. Oh, okay. I ain't gonna buy that. No, solo's not solo's fine. All right. It's not better and fine, it's a problem. It's just fine. I yeah, I have, for five I have, bucks. I would probably rather watch Rise of Skywalker again just because at least that was really funny. Okay. <laughs> I feel like solo looks better though. Well, right. I guess Rise does look good too, though. They they definitely got them good looking, even <clears> if they they're... Solo has the problem of trying to feed feed you every tiny bit of backstory about han solo in one movie it's like you don't need to do that well, right and a lot <laughs> okay, of it got doesn't to... need to be fed to us ever at all like <laughs> oh his name was because some guy said that he was alone no i hated i hated that i'm like why did you write that that's just no one no one needs that so i wonder no if when lord that. and miller were doing it if that like somehow resonated better and once everything got tweaked just got you know whatever I don't Sorry, know. It was too much like helpful. Rogue One, which I already was not a, as much a fan of as a lot of other people were. So it's like, but oh, it's like a Andor. heist okay. again. Yes, no, Andor is my favorite Star Wars thing, period. I've seen a lot of other people with this take. I'm, it's, I'm not alone on this, that a lot of people prefer love Andor, don't really care for Rogue One, and I'm I'm one of those. Oh, I guess I'm the other way. It's very different. Well, yeah, there you go. Uh, hi, Mike. You got, you got hi, your Mike. audio? Ew, can you hear me okay? Yeah, there we go. It's, it does sound like you're in a hotel room, but we can live with that. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to hear. Oh, because I got I got an actual decent camera or a mic with me. So, yeah. And you know I what? It's just picking up room ambience. Sound. No, that, that's fine. I think, okay. I think my personal ear, I'm like so used, as you know, I used to hold that mic to my face the entire time. So I'm so used to close miking, right? When I hear any oh, ambience, yeah. I'm like, oh, that can't be right. <laughs> you know, one of the things I don't know, let me see if I can fuck around with I'm on my iPad too. Yeah, now so that you're talking, can... actually, it's it's fine. <laughs> okay, if I can fudge the settings, I think I can just turn the mic down some, and I think that would help. I'm in a deliberately carpeted room, and uh, the last place I lived, I put foam all over the walls. And I was recording yeah. from that room back then. So, yeah, I'm a very, I'm a big uh, insulator. I'm not Same a fan of podcasters who like rev really echoey rooms. <laughs> they they mm. don't seem to care. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there is some, or, there or, are some or streamers who do that on Twitch. It's like, you know, it's this, this echo chamber. It's like, put up something, please. Well, our guest <laughs> Philip, always happy to talk to him. But Mark, as you yeah. coined, it sounded like he was coming from space. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he's really just recording on his phone, whatever phone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've called in Scott in a few weeks to do that forbidden zone with us, and he's gonna be in on his phone, so he'll probably sound like an echoey mess to a certain extent. <laughs> cool. Right. Guests are allowed oh, to sound like echoey messes anyway. So. I, I think hey, some anyway. people like the echo. Sorry. Yeah. And it's yeah, everyone, everyone actually preference. sounds good. I don't know what I sound like because I know that's why I'm doing this again because I no longer hear my own audio, which is mm. whatever. Okay. You sound fine. I guess we should stop talking about Star Wars, start talking about Space 1999. <laughs> I had a films and filth oh. question, but I'll consider oh, that. Go later. ahead. Oh, me. I just, my wife's really kind of interested in the whole uh, Wicker Man. No, that's, thing, um, like, that's, so, that's, for sure uh it'll probably yeah, but be like how far in the long. future is that it's like 10 weeks or something i'm counting well, i can't pretty well we can record it wherever we want yeah, yeah yeah but i'm thinking late march early april for that but yes that that, Our, that is considered a go the problem is trying to find it for free somewhere on the streaming services everybody wants to charge 
rent on it and it's like really that movie um <laughs> yeah we're doing the fog in a couple of weeks the remake of the fog and i've been having a hard time finding that for free oh really uh, the original movie easy to find for free but yeah, my there's probably uh somewhere. half price books or rasputins around here that has a dvd of it for five bucks i could probably find it that way yeah there's my, there's I, my wicker, I, I need to i need to start a plex server where i can just put the movies on there good to go oh you can't see it there we go well that was weird it's like you're holding a, dun, dun. A, just a cube yeah yeah so yeah weird. i put them in these things where you get to keep the artwork but it doesn't take up space it's nice interesting okay hey mark I, you want to do an intro we'll do this thing sure Welcome to Podcast 1999, the podcast about Space 1999. I'm your host, Mark. This, this is Matt. Is co- I am your co-host, Matt. And there's, there's you are my co-host. There's our C- double double secret probation co-host, Brian. <laughs> yes, double. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the correct term for that? <laughs> I think and, uh, probation might se- not be in there. Double secret semi-co-host i think is what we saw on didn't it something like that something like that yeah <laughs> maybe on season two we'll stop saying that and uh joining back in from michelle the orville is mike richards getting spacey with us yeah man i'm just hanging out in uh you know the season two set uh where you guys haven't met anybody or seen anybody yet except a couple of characters <laughs> hey that oh, could yeah. be the season two set and for those not watching it's it's a it's a hotel room speaking of which what town have you found yourself in <laughs> Talking to Mike, we never I'm know in, where you are. Uh, Portland, Maine, this evening. All oh, right, I used wow. to work in Saco, Maine, like about five, yeah. ten kilometers down the down the. Um, it's it's actually door. one of, a name of one of the fixes on the arrival coming into here. Oh yeah, so are you getting uh, pelted with snow at the moment? No, it's lovely. Okay, I'm getting pelted with snow at the moment, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like a full on blizzard outside at the moment. <laughs> it's like seventy degrees here. So mine... I did. I did have oysters the other day. Speaking of Maine, it was a nice. lobster thing. I think. Lo- I mean, they do oysters too, but they lobster, probably got oysters. Lobster, yada yada yada. I'm a lobster. Good. I was. You know, I just about went for the lobster roll, but I'm uh, trying to do the plant based whole food thing. So I got a. Uh, uh-huh. uh, I got a veggie plate, which was delish, actually. Well, Maine does that well as well. Lots of hippies. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Because when I was working, it was environmental, environmental education. So it was like a gaggle of hippies, you know? Oh, that's those perfect. Are your, those, are my, those are my people, man. Yeah. yeah. So um, we did the lobster 10K. I ran a 10K with a lobster hat on. Mark, this is why okay. I'm so insistent on the lobster. I've run 10 kilometers with a lobster hat on for, for Maine being a lobster place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have Impressive. you seen the movie The Lobster? Hmm? Have you seen The Lobster, the movie? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I should. I, yeah, you should. I should. Okay. I don't want to tell you anything about it, but you should uh, see it. Okay, that sounds good. So anyway, my point is, I'm I'm in Death's other um, dominion tonight because that's what it t- this uh. morning. That's what it looks like outside here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in generic like space Thule, background. Huh? <laughs> I'm in generic space brown. The space background dot mp4. It's better than the one Mark had at the start. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was extremely distracting. Um, this is again, what I had. Moonbase Podcastio. Yes. Not to be confused with Moonbase Beta, which I just read about today. I don't know if you've heard about that. Is that a fan no. fiction or something? Fan kind of. Instead of a commander, okay, so you remember a master. You remember the giant, you know, <laughs> killing weapon, the the year one omnibus. They so they took it upon yeah. themselves to write a short story that involved Moonbase Beta, <laughs> a base that was a small research facility that got wiped out when when breakaway happened and so they took on their their crew and you know hilarity ensued and i don't want to spoil it for anybody but the fact that you've never heard of it before shows that it's kind of that kind of retcon that you're never going to hear about ever again (laughs) (laughs) so breakaway right waste disposal sites a and b were both on the dark side of the moon correct correct well and the dark side side of the the moon moon Far side of the moon. Yeah, far side of the moon. Good, good point. Mm-hmm. Far side of the moon, and that is the point that that is the part that is oh that we don't see from Earth, right? Because it's on the Correct. other side. So if something was to blow up really, real good on the far side of the moon, which way would the moon go? 
It'd be coming right at us, I'd you'd think. Yeah, it's coming right for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bruce Willis well, that that moon. Well, you got to keep in mind they're not two bodies this large, this close together. I mean, they're a quarter million miles apart. You know, they're angular size. It would probably swing by the Earth. <laughs> Maybe so we buzz. So we buzz the so we buzz the tower, and then and then we went. buzz the tower, <laughs> and we wreak total <laughs> havoc on Earth, which we have yet we, to see. Which we know, did. Also, yeah, yeah. They just hear about it in the news broadcast they pick up at the end of the episode. Good. Maybe it just yeah, kind of like skipped it. off the atmosphere like a like a, a pebble on on a lake. Yeah, <laughs> I okay. feel like it just went straight in a, in a straight line. Um, obviously not directly towards anything except for uh, the collision course planet. There are other scientific <laughs> implausibilities we have to consider in space 1999 for better. Yes, course. but that's that's what we were saying last week. You kind of like. <laughs> To get into the show, there's like five things you just kind of have to like sweep under the rug and, you know, deal with. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. I did rewatch uh, some of Breakaway just to sort of prepare for this going full circle. And nothing in that episode directly contradicted Dragon's Domain. So that was a nice thing. I was, I was kind of like, is this going to is this going to obviously completely conflict with that? It doesn't. So that's that's nice. And it, you know, it, it feels complete. Weird. It's got a of space course. probe in it. Got to have a long range space probe. A manned space probe. That that see that's the manned one. Manned space probe. That's the weird thing in that I have trouble like sweeping under the rug. I'm like, no probes are unmanned. It's a spaceship if you have people on it. So, well, but not not in the space 1999 <laughs> universe. It's like, yeah. why do I choose that hill to die on? You know that that I should be able to get over that pretty easily. Like well, John, we've got this. Or we've got drone. the latest technology. It's called a manned probe. Yes, they it, did the same thing in the Orville. I, I I don't remember if it was Shadow Realms or it might have been one of the comic books, but the comment was made that you know seven manned probes head in here, none of them returned. And I asked Jessica, I was like, "What's a manned probe?" And she was like, "Oh my God, they're dead!" I'm like, "They're dead." <laughs> it's a spaceship until they're dead. Now it's a probe. <laughs> <laughs> I figured Jessica would say, "I'm sorry, that's a crude probe, not a manned probe." That's very sexist. <laughs> Was was Sputnik well, then we'll a get probe? More hate, we'll get more hate reviews for being too, you know, too progressive. Did Sputnik have <laughs> Sputnik having a dog on it? Was that a probe? Or was it a satellite? Membership? A satellite with a dog? Did Sputnik? Uh, yeah. Did, did, did Sputnik circle the Earth? I don't remember. Would that be a dog to a dog? I think that's cruelty to animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dog is not I mean, gonna make it back. I mean, the it's Russians say they, they orbited the Earth the first time out. Took the U.S. what three times? I don't I think Russia who would just, you know, throw 50,000 men at Hitler have no problem sacrificing a dog or two. Yeah, yeah, I think well I'm talking about the cosmonauts themselves, but I don't think they had a problem there either. No, no they're really fine. <laughs> I think um, they sacrificed a cosmonaut or two we didn't hear about <laughs> until yeah. later. Yes. <laughs> um so I, if we didn't say it already, we're basically just having our general overview of season 1 and you know, Mike, maybe you stumbled into how to do this is we'll just uh go through each that giant book you could do it that way i'm just going to shout yeah, out i was going to go through this in production i have order. a list in this yeah i have a list book and i'll just read you all the stories okay cool. brian reads to us for four hours <laughs> yeah, story how, how time it turns out um matter of life and death i guess we're going production order that is the one where um mm -hmm. helena meets her former husband who's now like a space god i'm gonna say that should have been later i mean that's i don't know I, maybe I'm wasting time by saying that the order should be different because we're not watching them in the intended order. <laughs> that is what definitely was a weird one to watch second. It wasn't really an intended order though. I think that's no, why we got it. I don't think anybody. Yeah. I don't more. think. It, um, I think that one is a good illustration of how much the later half of the season really bumps up the production though. Cause in that one, mm -hmm. I, I guess they'd spend all the money making the moon base. So they had like pull back, for the earlier part of the season and uh we just get like it basically looks like the uh you know the the outside bar area of a, of a tiki room you know <laughs> yeah parrots i mean the parrots are cool i can't complain about parrots but you know they're not <laughs> they're not aliens they're just parrots i guess and you it, could have parrots in another planet there's no you and know. i think i'm gonna say this a few times i again enjoyed watching the episode i like the episode but when i'm looking at this um breakaway like you pointed out it in earth which is something but matter of life and death i definitely having not watched it for this particular conversation i'm like that one really didn't make that much sense 
<laughs> no. And also it was definitely sort of a, you know, bargain basement. What was it? Uh, is- I compared it to something. Um, not to 2010. Yeah, bargain like bargain basement 2010 because it's like mm. the I've returned from Saturn. I mean Jupiter, whichever <laughs> the other one. <laughs> and I'm now on a mission. <laughs> depends on being. the book or the movie. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, they went. Yeah, OG, but that was the whole fun. thing. You know, I've I've returned, and you must not, you must not land on here because it is not for humans. And so get out. And they left. Now, after that is Black Sun, and the next two episodes for me are mm-hmm. kind of a sweet spot, which I, I think that people in general don't rate very high in Space 1999, but uh, this one and Ring Around the Moon both, I, I think back probably because they're so whack and trippy and they don't make sense, but in a way I like better. It's like g- galactic absurdity as opposed to just some guy. Well, Black Sun kind of, uh, I did like Black Sun. I know that it had something that annoyed me, like some convenience in it that annoyed me a little bit. But um, it was it felt like a nice little way to get to know the crew and uh, everybody hang out waiting to die. That's always fun. In an intensely psychedelic final five minutes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which for me, that that's yeah. always a selling point. You know, the the what you said mark about the getting to know the crew and having that episode be that early kind of reminds me a little bit of um the naked time on the original series of of star trek where it's sort of like okay everybody's inhibitions are gone we can take a look at what hopes and dreams and what you know what everybody's um kind of motivation is you know and we saw a lot we learned a lot about the characters through that that they repeated then on next gen also um, but yeah, having that existential exercise that they had as that was, was a good way to, to, to get to know that crew. I, I remember my first impression of that episode just from being a kid watching it was, was good. I mean, I, I thought it was very interesting that you would have this, and I think, I think all thoughts of black holes being windows to other places in the galaxy, you know, like Vedra 6 disappearing into what they used to call a black hole. I think <laughs> that's, uh, I don't think things would fare very well. Uh, Victor Bergman uh, is a, is a you know, top-notch scientist. I I still don't know if he could have pulled off the shielding that they said. I think McConaughey made it okay. <laughs> uh, convenient. And there's also a little movie called The Black Hole a few years later, which kind oh, of yeah. Oh, yeah. Thing. Oh, come Robert on, that's censor. That sends him to hell. That's that seems perfectly <laughs> or have it. hard to tell. <laughs> I need to rewatch that because I really don't feel like I've ever given it my full attention. The thing but, with um... the black hole is it's always like I need to rewatch it, and there are a lot of cool things about it. But after you watch it, you're like, oh, I now I remember why I haven't watched this for a while. <laughs> it just paced really badly. <laughs> this is a weird. I am fascinated by the whatever you call it, the dark period of Disney, where they just kept bombing and it was like both the live action and the animated stuff from that period where it's it has this darkness to it that is hard to really put into words figment like I all think, of it i think figment, figment encapsulates that period of disney just hmm, maybe the, the, the purple dinosaur from epcot center because he's kind yeah. of scary looking but he's kind of cute and um they never quite figure out what to do with them because they you know mm-hmm. well you and i have been on the crappy version of the ride right so <laughs> yeah i it's like you know i love the rescuers but there is like a dark darkness to it and i mm-hmm. guess it's just because it's rats in the sewer or whatever but you know uh okay well ring around the moon i watched it one time but it was after you guys did the episode for it while i was in the hospital so uh i don't have a super strong uh Thanks again, attachment mike. to it thank you mike i'm glad Second to have you board um but yeah um well this is your ground your your platform as the guy that's on every other episode to have your way with it if you want to have any way with it i didn't really have any strong feelings about it i just kind of was like well that's fun see and now i, I should have rewatched that actually yeah I, I most i mostly remember people walking around in, in giant black box rooms which uh, that's always like a plus for me black sun as well um mm-hmm. And I remember um, that, and of course, a, a giant moon that looks like a brain with an eye in it. Those two things, I'm like, yes, mm-hmm. I like that episode. But it is it is yeah. usually at the bottom of the bin when people rate season one episodes, which, again, this and Black Sun, I don't get. They're they're kind of among, I don't think I'm going to call them my favorite, but they're among them, you know? Above average episodes for me. 
Yeah. I also it, started this interesting trend of um, the Alphans relations to the computer and their relations to aliens. Cause it seems like aliens are either taking over the computer and controlling the Alphans or controlling the Alphans to take over the computer. <laughs> and you get lots mm -hmm. of shots of people going up to that keypad on the wall and going, <laughs> I want to do that. that. That's, that's a dream come true. Just go and, have your way with a large keypad well, even in the it's, 70s i was like don't you have to have some sort of feedback to see what the heck it is you're typing i mean <laughs> I, it's funny to me i computer mean computer keyboard you, you see what you're typing <laughs> i i love that that but it's also kind of silly that nobody could envision that that someone would just be able to communicate directly with a computer that they have to make a man go and go and mash the buttons when did <laughs> you know that, I mean? when did they release the altair which is you know the first home computer with no display if i remember correctly you're basically programming i think we likes. debunked that because you were we had this discussion on some other podcast where you said that it had like no, no okay. screen at all but it well, did I, have a screen i think the basic package didn't but you could uh, you know connect it i guess i i don't remember but oh i'll trust you 1974 probably. so it's very close to this okay so okay so contemporary it would have to be connected to a serial terminal to have any output so I guess you could no I, TV I, output. It did not come with a monitor built into it, which I think at the time most computers would have just had the monitor, you know, molded into yeah, it. Yeah, and and sometimes yeah, the analog output, like you know, the Pong and all the video games of the era, just had analog TV out, so you could use a TV as a monitor. So yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking on Space 1999 with computer that that would be their main <laughs> reference point. Let's extrapolate mm -hmm. this thing in 25 years, you know? Yeah. Which, but I mean, it, it aged well that they don't use punch cards and things like that, which were really punch well, cards yeah. were being used even even in sci-fi, even in the 80s. I was telling somebody I had to do a punch card assignment in college, just one. <laughs> it, it was already way on it, out, but the guy made us do it just for the sake of saying, hey, you've done a punch card assignment. <laughs> oh, I blow kids' minds now by say, telling them I spent half of my junior and senior years of high school in a dark room, you know, with chemicals. Probably yeah. damaged yeah. me. I wanted to be Peter I did that Parker in college too. <laughs> yeah, me too. I could, uh, you know, did, you you were did you get the thing where you were loading film canisters in the pitch black darkness? Oh I was yeah, doing that. Oh lot. yeah, I was yeah. good oh, with that. color. Yeah, yeah. We got to use the advanced dark room where um, during our my junior year, we found that one of the senior students had been taking nudie pictures of his girlfriend in the forest and was hiding them in uh, above a shelf. <laughs> so <God. laughs> we were like, wow. oh my. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a fine for high school students. <laughs> it was definitely one of those. I was hoping that girls would try something in the dark room, and they never did. I wonder why. <laughs> you know, nope, nope. Uh, oh, wait, let's turn the lights off. All of us advanced okay. dark room boys were boys. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there are lots of girls in my photography class that yeah, you know, smarter than that, obviously. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, Earthbound. That's Mark mm -hmm. is Earthbound today with his screen there, I guess. But you are now Simmons. Yeah, it's our first <laughs> um our first hammer horror icon in this show. Yeah. Uh, the first yeah. appearance of the wig. I was about to yeah. call him, oh, the, the show's first good villain, but he's not a villain at all. He's not a villain. So I unless he, you're uh Simmons, I guess. Oh so, okay, Simmons is the first good villain. Sorry, I, you you said hammer horror, so I was crossing wires. Okay, yes, Simmons is the show's first good villain. Oh. And one yeah. of the more grounded ones, because everyone else is like an alien maniac or being infected by aliens or you know well also it's like what's a more realistic villain than your superior officer <laughs> you know that's like that's the most realistic possible thing it's like if anything you know i don't i don't think star trek really starts to have like federation bad guys until we get to like deep space nine am i am i off on that yeah oh, there's no, lots it, of bad morals and commodores and that bad morals yeah yeah there's you know there's the guy that you know took over that couldn't command in um the Matt old decker. age episode kind of, i mean he's, yeah. he's broken more than villain but there I mean, he's definitely doing bad stuff yeah it's like um even in the arc seven like... episode there was the douchey um diplomat that was there that uh, Scotty yeah, had a, a terrible caller from. I remember that guy. Yeah, the ultimate computer guy had the um the 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 flaw of hubris. Of course, I mean, is that villainous? I don't know, but it didn't work or out Pic well. <laughs> or Picard, where it's just everyone. <laughs> yeah, everyone all the time. 
everyone all the time everywhere all at once um no anyway did, uh, what was was it the network trying to like put more marketable episodes out first is that the reason why they were aired in such drastically different order than production um, i was thinking I would, earthbound should I be the second assume. episode right because we never well, that would Simmons be great for a second episode and i believe yeah, it should have been aired uh this aired way down the uh like 13th uh, or something like that aired 13th it's fifth production 14th so yeah mm. so i feel like um, we kind of said on the... probably did this yeah i think we kind of said on the theory that since those later episodes the production values are kind of bumped up a lot in some of those later episodes so they just wanted to space those throughout the season more is, is that where we kind of I well mean, yeah that's, here, but yeah that <laughs> seems like the obvious because of the expensive episodes war games is fourth um do 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 dragons domains eighth mission of the darians ninth infernal machine 18th you see they got them pretty well spaced out that way yeah i wish i had a better memory of how they aired you know locally as as i'm looking at the list though i'm see here's the thing i'm like earthbound is probably the best episode up to this point in production but I am thinking that I, I, I prefer so. Black Sun and Ring Around the Moon still because I'm weird. I mean, I liked Earthbound better, but Earthbound is more of a well, Black Sun is more of a, and Ring Around the Moon are more like sort of visual. Let's sit, hang out and trip out where Earthbound is a character driven thing. And I think that's more Matt, that's more my thing than Matt's thing. Yeah, I guess I like driven stuff. film process, you know, process film FX. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I thought Earthbound was very much in the tradition of the Twilight Zone, you know, like a good twist. You get you get your comeuppance when you're a total douche. The universe will have its <laughs> way with you. Um, I, and just that that knowing that this guy is trapped in a box for the next 80 years or whatever it was going to take him was brilliant. I thought. Best dispatching I, I, I like that episode. Yes. Yeah, that was the best yeah. dispatching of a villain. <laughs> and it's funny because Matt and I had done for the Time Enough podcast the Rip Van Winkle caper, which also has guys put themselves into stasis and one of the guys dies. Right. <laughs> and, uh, that's you the know, it's so you think similar. that's what Sim is going to look like when they get to Earth? Yeah, yeah. Sci-fi it's rolls. in a box. <laughs> Was that the? It's it's gold. I'll, I'll give it to you. It's, it's gold. That episode. That yeah, was, and they're like, yeah, whatever. And they, yeah, there's that. the. The forbidden don't reveal the spaceship. shocking twist of the rip van winkle <laughs> <laughs> sorry spoiler alert like, folks from a 70 uh, year old show <laughs> the, yeah the, the guys are just like i don't know he was trying to give me this thing it was weird and he goes back to his like regular car and it's like the forbidden planet spaceship like i don't know mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> robbie the um, robot's little you know. chariot yeah yeah well the um story i alluded to earlier uh, kind of sets the stage it takes place between breakaway which they have listed in here first and then they but Earthbound right after it. And so there's a lot of uh, drama going on with uh, uh, Simmons in the intervening short story that these guys wrote. And so kind of makes you probably feel even more relieved that he's no longer around. <laughs> I mean, it would have been great duplicitous. if they'd had him, if they'd had yeah. him for several episodes, just as kind of a, a jerk, a jerkwad presence on the Dr. Alpha. Smith it character. Been great. Yeah. Cause Dr. Just, Smith isn't, there usually isn't a whole lot of tension unless it's manufactured. Like I go into this a lot where it's, we don't get a whole lot of time with just the Alphans because it's always about, well, it's me. I've shown up. I'm, you know, I'm Christopher Lee. I'm here to mess with everybody. I am Baylor. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Jarek. <laughs> View my package. Anyway. I do like those yeah. guys though. I mean, well, no, me I, mean, too. I don't want to have dinner too. with them, but. But. Maybe it just should have been more like half and half because it was maybe, I don't know, six or seven episodes before I even got a grasp of who the regulars were. Because sometimes there's just full episodes where Paul or Alan don't talk that much. It was like, oh, it's okay. still the so creepiest Julian Glover, I think, I've ever seen was when he was in Space 1999. I mean, he was in Bond, he was in Indiana Jones, uh-huh. but this character, he just freaked me out. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was great. I mean, uh but anyway so uh another, another time, time another, place. another place i always hear the u2 song when when i see that title so i don't know what that means it just <laughs> starts playing in my head i compared it to the movie another earth have you guys seen another earth 
this no. is a movie where there's uh-uh. another Earth. Uh, I, I compared it a lot on the episode, and there was one other episode where I straight up called this episode another Earth without thinking about it, hmm. which is hilarious to me. But yeah, it's, it's sort Earth, of like another moon. Another Earth shows up in the sky, and some lady like goes gets a wins a trip to the other Earth and then seduces a guy whose life she ruined on regular Earth. And uh, this dumb. This episode. This isn't like a doppelganger Earth, is it? That it's on the other side of the sun, yeah. so we never see it. Yeah. Well, no, it's yeah. It's just it showed up, and it's like here's like another exact other journey Earth. to the far side of the suns. Mirror <laughs> universe <Universal> stuff, <laughs> which generally I hate mirror universe stuff because I think it's stupid. I think it's totally permissible in this case because it is just an offshoot of this one timeline. It's just it bothers me that the timeline diverged like 800 years ago, and yet everyone's the same. That, that doesn't this sense. is one where you can't hold it against it, but I just feel like no. DS9 just owned this episode when they did um, <laughs> Children of Time, you know, what, 20 years later? They, yes, absolutely. Ch- yes, mm-hmm. Children of Time is better. Um, sexy right. Odo went <laughs> just ruined it. <everything. laughs> it's sexy really funny. Odo. Sexy Smooth right. Odo. I just Smooth. came to tell you that I love you and I'm going to kill all these people. <laughs> hey there, hey there, Therese. So Hi. Maybe this is an episode of Space 99 that is aged a little weird just because someone's taken the general concept and kind of, I would say, improved on it. We don't even know what the concept yeah. is. We don't get no explanation as to why this happened. And why it's the kind of thing suddenly. that it was a, You'd think that'd make a great Easter egg to base a future episode on, like where you see the flip side of it, you know, you see it from the other point of view or something. But that would have to be the end of the series because everyone's come back to Earth at the end. <laughs> well, it's similar, to, um, similar to Collision Course, where someone tells them, you have to go and collide with that thing. Go back, go back to Alpha and go collide with that thing because it's your destiny. And then they do and everything works out. And uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to get go along with that because that's usually a bad idea it's like three times if you can't yeah. war games like just go back to alpha and die uh-huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. like what <laughs> a good place to plant your boot heels i don't know next one is a missing link which is not the one with the caveman that is the one right where Koenig is um is in the he goes to the bronze peter cushion's yes. planet yeah our right. next big hammer guy <laughs> yeah also with the wig yeah um this one was pretty fun. Uh, looking back on it, it was different from um, all the other ones, I think. Like, I don't feel like we had any, like, very many benevolent aliens who had a society who were sort of like, actually, now you hang out here with us. Oh, you're going to uh, hook up with my daughter? Actually, leave. Is this the <laughs> shoutiest episode for Koenig? Possibly. Yeah. And if anyone remembers another episode being shoutier, please, please tell me. I'm just kind of doing that on a whim there. <laughs> Most shouty Martin Landa. Okay. <laughs> Are you doing a switch on that? <laughs> mm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I mean, Infernal Machine had a little bit of yelling, but. Uh, well, you're just so pissed. Yeah, well, he this is the spider webs. So he was screaming yeah, he doesn't spider, like webs. spider webs. He does not like spider webs. <laughs> but, I mean, this is. Uh, probably the only time we really see Koenig get abducted and everything falls apart and people are all fighting <laughs> because they can't cannot function without their commander, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But you know, oh yeah, they really can't yeah. function. Yeah, that's kind of silly. Yeah, I, for me, I guess this one's kind of forgettable, and that's because the next five episodes are are not <laughs> mm-hmm. like it's in a the way we did the show it's like this one you just kind of three weeks later you've forgotten about it because you now had five like kind of better episodes or more memorable episodes i should say maybe not better but more memorable it aired earlier originally wait no i'm sorry i'm wrong (laughs) i'm completely wrong aired much later i'm looking at the wrong timeline uh but um Anyway, I guess my, my main point is unless someone has a hot take, let's go to Guardian of Peary because now we're looking at like, you know, uh, th- th- um, that's a contender for the best, I think. I'd say so. What do you think of that one, Mike? I, I, I already did a podcast on that one. So, <laughs> uh, Guardians of Peary? Yeah. Not, doesn't, it's not really jumping out on me as far as like, you know, best or worst. I think it was just sort of. You know, one that, um, you know, more of like a filler episode, I'd say. 
Yeah, the story itself is not that interesting. It's all that insane production and design, I think, in that one that does it for me. That we're just on yeah, that. Yeah, the planet uh -huh. was crazy with the, um, <laughs> with the yeah. uh, trees with those spheres and the ground was a, like a, some sort of checks, chessboard pattern or something. I don't know, checkerboard. It was just it, like. It, it reminded me of like all those weird fuzzy black light posters not all of them but like of a weird fuzzy like black light poster from the 70s you just you know, explained just... why i like it i think <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it's cool because even though it was one where it just had kind of one antagonist it did give us like conflict within the crew so you did kind of get to know people better even though you're getting to know people who are under the influence of what's the naked time thing. Like Mike was. Mentioning. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Mark, it is kind of the naked time of this series. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you were never an Athens guy, uh, but did you make it to the junkman's daughter's brother with the black light elevator? Yes. Wait, okay. I don't remember an elevator. Maybe I didn't see the elevator. Oh, maybe you didn't. Yeah. You go in the elevator and there was just, it was a black light the whole ride up and with the walls covered. Mm -hmm. And I would just take the elevator for fun because yes, you explained why I like that. Episode. Yeah, of course. <laughs> if I'd have known. You know, I, have. I, 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 I guess for that one, Brian, if you want to call your uh, space squid shows up in a different form early in period again. Yes. I, I think that charts or you call yeah, it? the uh, the the good the shape of the guardian, this is sphere uh, ovoid thing with the big white glowing eye, you know, was echoed echoes of it in, in Dragon's Domain with the tentacled monster with the big eye. Just I wonder if it was the same eye, <laughs> they just used the same glowing thing, uh, dome or whatever. But um, hmm. I don't uh, think there's any cosmic significance to it. I mean, maybe some somebody wrote it into a story somewhere, but I kind of doubt it. It was just kind of a design uh coincidence i think this also seemed to be the big production one up to this point i guess this question is more for for mark since you were watching it mostly first time ish in this order um would you does peary look less good after you've seen things like uh death's other dominion and infernal machine yes it does okay. it's not it's not that good it's not as good as that that cluster of episodes towards the end yeah <laughs> Uh, Force of Life is one that I think people generally really like, and I and is not that that one is like pure middle for me, I think. But uh, I mean, I, I liked it, yeah, yeah. I think my opinion is probably in the minority on that. <laughs> I liked it because it made sense, the character's motivation made sense, and uh, and it was just like a serial killer, and uh, you know. Maybe that's why it didn't like resonate with me as hard. I'm like, well, if I want to watch that, I'll go watch you know, Zodiac again. <laughs> and it was very much yeah. a force i mean it just was like trying to survive it didn't seem to it had some rudimentary intelligence but it didn't have a problem with like killing anybody who got in its way right so it's like we didn't have yeah. any sort of moral meaning messages we're going to have a deep discussion and understand the motivations of this being no it's just going to wreak havoc and so we just got to hope to survive it and yeah it makes Zora. me feel it makes me feel kind of bad to say like that this show operates at its best when it doesn't have any morals because it doesn't have any morals to mess up but kind of is the case here i don't know well koenig has no oversight so if he does something amoral i mean you know at least in this season um barry morse can say victor can say something to him or you know mm -hmm. dr russell can say but it's he's it's he's got no oversight really you know yeah get it yeah and victor uh Bergman must have uh, must have spoke up one too many times between season one and season two. <laughs> yeah, we haven't gotten into that yet, but um, I'm sorry. More, more spoiler alerts. Um, I I enjoyed the heck out of this episode, man. I thought Ian McShane was great. I, I liked the. Uh, I think this is this is one of the ones that I covered, and I just uh, I think Matt and I commented that it was the sexiest episode up up until that point. Um. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was fun. Oh yeah, the solarium scene. I forgot. Ah, uh, yes, that. the solarium scene. Yeah. Yes, there was that with the Mrs. Robinson <laughs> shot, the graduate shot. Yeah, the, yes. the leg. Amazing. Yes, there was some style. Uh, Alpha Child. I think one thing that I'm going to say about that, what it seems to really like, is the production. That's pretty plain Jane. I mean, it's got those cool model ships, so the models really start popping. But it's yeah. mostly a bottle episode, and and just um. Jarek is so absurd. It's hard for me not to like this episode a lot. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Like I 
watching it for the first time, I had absolutely no idea that that you know it, it started off as just sort of the omen, like you know we've seen a bunch of omen links here, and, right. and it just turned into man then, <laughs> then David crazy Bowie man shows is gonna up, you know possess all of Ziggy us. Stardust yeah. shows up, evil Ziggy makes Stardust. out with his mom or the lady who's possessed <laughs> his mom immediately, which is you know it's just um you know. <laughs> I love the swings, the big swings like that. So, yeah, that that's definitely guest star did the, you know, made the show work in that case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to stay on the page that The Last Sunset's a contender for being the best one here. Because, uh, again, I like the psychedelic weirdness and you don't do better in weird space mushrooms and Paul suddenly having too much of a personality. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, my in, favorite in, um, at the time. Here we have um, basically a preview of Helena being all trippy. Uh, well, of, of anybody being trippy. I don't remember. I don't think Paul was in Guardian of Piri, was he? I don't really remember. You see Kano. You see a lot of people. See and lot particularly Kano. Victor and Helena were the ones acting really, you know, drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, so this I don't was kind of his they... makeup episode. I want an episode where I act crazy too, and he'd say, "Okay, we'll give you this one." <laughs> they gave him a few <laughs> lines in uh, Black Sun, but it wasn't like they didn't give him a whole lot until this point. And yeah, this was my favorite episode up till this point. I remember, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the, the, this is the the link to Guardian of Fury is that this is the uh, return of all the Alphans are just out on the beach doing beach towel stuff. The beach towels like, are good for Space 1999. I feel like they're always popping when the towels come out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that went away later. It is, fam <laughs> it is family television. The towels don't go away. But... Everybody's wrapped in a blue towel of some kind, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why don't they have those, what do they call them, play suits that Bond was always wearing in the 60s, the terry cloth play suit or whatever, the powder blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think we were, like, considering if there was a problem that Last Sunset basically has four different episode ideas all crammed into it which in mm -hmm. a lot of cases doesn't work I, I think in looking back i'm like it worked pretty well in last sunset i mean you certainly don't get bored watching it yeah do it's they all fit together in that concept. way i don't know but yeah yeah, yeah. it's like four bonkers concepts I mean, all at once <laughs> if that was the second episode of the series i would be very excited for what was going to come you know it's um it is definitely one of the most well-rounded and well executed. I'm gonna I mean, go with Earl's idea that it should have been the last one. It has last in the title. Sure. That's good too. <laughs> That's good too. Um wait, the last enemy does too. Oh no, which one are we gonna say? They chose last? poorly. You chose poorly. I mean poorly. it's a much better title than than you know what the season two last episode ends up being that we'll talk about later. <laughs> is that the, the Dorkons? Is that the last one? That's it. <laughs> the Dorkons. 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 <laughs> <Poor cons. laughs> looking forward to that uh voyager's return another another manned probe uh mm -hmm. once you get past that it's pretty side i would i spent half the episode confused though cause that they were calling it a probe and then it had an inside and, and a weird power system that kills everybody so it, I, I was confused watching it now now that i've thought about it more i guess i'm i'm good to go <laughs> I remember I like that I, I, I didn't return. watch this one recently because I I didn't do this I didn't join you on this episode, but it was um, yeah the, it it had that those those engines that were designed faulty, that didn't yeah the, the you know the drive it, was is very fast drive but unfortunately right. it's yeah. a highly radioactive drive and it seemed yeah. like people were a little careless about which direction they pointed it when they were creating it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take you think the, the very first thing you would not do is point it at you know <laughs> earth or somebody when when you're turning it on so it became a controversial thing and of course it all uh -huh. happened in the distant past oh the 1980s so yeah. no one seems to remember it <laughs> except like it? It at two least guys it felt... who happen to be victims of it <laughs> yeah my yeah my, my father what uh, it's like paul's mother but then Paul's the one father guy, died both parent right the one guy lost both parents so he was like Ugh. it's he was worse like, punch him yeah <laughs> um this is sort of the apt pupil i guess of this series <laughs> apt space pupil um i don't know i i i enjoyed the episode i thought it it justified itself you know it, it sort of feels like it adds to mythology because 
we're we're dealing with a lot of people in space hate earth now earth people did this one so have, does make sense did this one have an actual this one did not have an actual flashback like dragon's domain did it i don't no. think so i don't so, think so i just um in my mind it does so i guess that means they did the backstory well, pretty well for it yeah that's the thing is that <laughs> dragon's domain didn't need that flashback really well i guess it did for the dragon thing but like it would have made more uh, sense here did, i think <laughs> it could have been shorter the flashback <laughs> you could have just shown that one part and we would have gotten it it, it was just sort of you know at that point their their money was running out but we'll get to that later obviously well i, I like to say things that make mark slightly angry so collision course yeah yeah. <laughs> well, poor um Margaret Layton was that her name? <laughs> Had to just come out the and the spider lady say nonsense lines that didn't mean anything that she didn't mm -hmm. understand. This and was we. definitely up for rebuttal because um for me it's kind of like 50-50. It's an average one, just like I was saying with uh Force of Life for me. But it seems this one's mm -hmm. generally rated pretty well. People like it okay. So any, well, anyone... I think they see it as one of those big concept ideas that, you know, if people were actually trying to put together some sort of <laughs> coherent overview of the show and have it go from, you know, point A to B to C and have it some sort of story because we keep being told that there's some sort of destiny. I think the first time we talk about the moon's destiny in space and how it factored into this. And so I think that's why people give it a, give it a pass because it's like, okay, this means something, even though it's like, what? <laughs> what does it mean? But also, Build, building your mountain on mashed third. potatoes. Mm -hmm. It aired a third, so maybe people look at it fondly because the the uh, the original show order is Breakaway, then Force of Life, then Collision Course. So maybe it's like this is their first taste of. So if wow, this man. had been the third one for you, would you be like screw the show or or be okay earlier in the run? I would be less mad at it, but I would still be mad at it. Okay. Um. Yeah. It, it's. It's one of those things where you pull the pull on the thread and it falls apart, but you could probably just watch it without thinking about it too much. Ooh, the like, strings. Wow, that's profound. <laughs> Turns out you can you can just fly into a planet. I can't think of it like I I know that like you kept bringing up Janeway in, in Voyager and how she kept trying to <laughs> destroy the ship over and over again. It's like a good uh rebuttal to that. Like what and I can't think of a specific instance that is as ridiculous as this episode as Koenig just being like, no, we have to fly into the planet. But um, also, I think on Star Trek, you're supposed to listen when people are telling you not to do things. Maybe you're just infuriating this. This is one of the purest forms of Koenig is always right. <laughs> yeah, and that, that does does annoy me. It's like people are trying to everyone is literally just like fist fighting him, trying to stop him. But the uh, show, as if to say sorry to you, went to Death's Other Dominion, Brian Blessed, uh, <laughs> Jack Shrapnel. Was that a John Shrapnel? Shrapnel. A John Shrapnel, I think. But, yeah, man. yeah. So. Oh, good. And I'm like. Those guys brought it, man. I like those two yeah, guys. Yeah, so good. So good. <laughs> and I think Shrapnel was a better than two when you're, when you're, you know, and, and, and that's meant as an ultimate compliment because Brian Blessed, of course, is mm -hmm. never anything less than great so <laughs> yeah it's it had two incredibly talented guest stars who both of them had an, a character arc within the show and you know that whole you know colony of people who sometimes agreed with them just it, it felt like a full fully fleshed out episode even though uh john guesting on it did point out there might be too much here but you know <laughs> um uh, most gory. Uh, I, does this does this last of the goriest shot of the first series? <laughs> Probably. Okay. Smoldering, Brian. <laughs> yeah, very yeah, smoldering. Because I think Dragon's Domain didn't towards. even really get it on just gore factor, you know. On creep. No, factor, a lot, sure. lot of broken glass, if I remember right. But not, <clears throat> not gore. I wish I could. I wish I was a smoldering Brian. Smolder born that. <laughs> oh, you are smoldering, Brian. Come on. <laughs> That's when you got on fire. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, the Full Circle, considered the worst episode of the series, according to IMDb. Um, mm -hmm. I always say that the biggest sin you can commit is to be boring, and it was not boring. Mm -hmm. That's my slight compliment for it, I guess. <laughs> I, I feel like I had fun with this. Um, 
I think the people make it sounded like there it was kind of dramatic making it because there was always some kind of issue with like how skimpy the outfits were. Like I think uh I like seeing that on screen Barbara though. Bain was, like like, Barbara Bain was annoyed that um CNA Merton was wearing less than she was or something like that. Um that's the first that's the first of two times that happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also interestingly, this is the only as far as I can tell, the only episode that's in the same place uh in uh production order and airing order not that that means anything relative to everything else but you know right in the middle mm. it's 15 this, uh, this is the height of um martin i know screaming of course but he's screaming incoherently in this one so i don't yeah. know if it counts right <laughs> screaming in well, caveman yeah uh, and, and barbara bain gets to scream too so. oh yeah that's fantastic <laughs> oh god she was such a scream oh gosh Here, here's where the... that that story about her like practicing her screaming and her like daughter came home and was horrified by it or something. <laughs> right okay Here, here's where you get to the point where the titles quit making any sense and become interchangeable with end of eternity which episode is end of eternity everyone maybe that should be the last episode what happens in it <laughs> what oh, happens that's, in uh, that the one where uh, Ballard, eternity that's ends where Ballard shows up that's right so i love the episode but i had to just look at the box to remember which one it was because i couldn't remember which one it was <laughs> even though i keep talking about Balor, i just can't remember the name of the episode he's in because it doesn't say anything <laughs> yeah so yeah. the last time i saw this one was years ago also but but i'm just reading and i'm, I'm just gonna guess here commander koenig professor bergman and baxter investigate I'm I'm guessing Baxter Which didn't one's make doomed. it. Baxter, is, <laughs> Baxter didn't make it. He's the guy Not who Baxter. gets murdered. He's the guy who gets murdered with the flies the airplane around and goes. Right. I wish there were more characters with red sleeves, so the red sleeve guys could be the guys who die. But really, it's usually the purple sleeves. The security. Uh, it's the purple sleeves on the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. It's very interesting how they always make go out of their way to say the names of the people who are going to die. I should point out, by the way, I've been doing this podcast with the DVDs like a hand of cards here the entire time. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I I just have the page open to the episode order, and that's it, really. That's probably yeah, smarter. The directory than open doing. to the uh, my rips of the DVDs from 20 years ago. So my, hand, my hand's going to be <laughs> sore nice. later. Okay. I still um, got to get a Blu-ray player to rip the Blu-rays with. I feel, yep. I feel like the next two are kind of a yin yang, like they're kind of similar stories done with a different perspective perspective. So I like in production order now that they're next to each other, which is War Games and The Last Enemy. Flip the titles. Um Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and thing. it works just fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Flip the titles. Um but I, I know Mark, when you and I were talking about this, I think I ended up kind of preferring war games and you kind of preferred the last enemy. Correct. Is that like I like surrealism and, and you like a sensible story more. I just, I like characters and you like seeing things go blow up. And that's, that's totally, I mean, I don't know. I, <laughs> I like, um, I like People treachery. The you know, there's like there, the last enemy has a bunch of treachery and backstabbing and like just tawdry soap opera type stuff. And People I like living that in kind glass of, cases. I kind of like that yeah. though. <laughs> kind of like that no, I, that that this 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 uh character got the best of them and so coney had to turn the tables and get the best of her da, da, da. yeah yeah Over that's the thing i love and like, lots the show of spaceships succession. like the show Just succession i like on. more than i like oh, yeah. succession more than uh, game of thrones <laughs> that's that's probably all you need mm -hmm. to know oh i see what you mean yeah i yeah, guess what i, I like about war games is that no one's quite a villain in there like the um where are the aliens called da, 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 da. and it doesn't say on there give a name maybe they, maybe uh, they the don't Beathans, say them. they're the beefen oh wait war games uh yeah war games maybe they don't oh, say the name God, war games anyway yeah, beefens were uh the next one yeah those are yeah, the beef the deltons those, and the beefens yes yeah those aliens and war games are misguided their um vetting system is weird but they i don't feel like they're like I mean, the Daltons and Bethans maybe aren't evil either, but they're more aggressive, right? I think at least some of them are evil. We just don't know who actually hit first. They both <laughs> say that the each of them says the other one struck first, but it can't. One of them has to have attacked first. Like, that's not, you know, Make it that's not how things are. At the same time, just someone... Like I, maybe and, somebody could be like, "What I thought I, a fly had bit me on the back of the neck. That that means someone was shooting at me. I, mm. I, I guess <laughs> that's not flies don't bite, but you know, 
You know what I'm saying? Here, here's another. I, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say War, War Games. Just I, I think that's probably top three series one episode for me personally. It was just kind of big in scale. It was you know impressive. The you know the um, uh, the Mark Nine Hawks were cool as hell. And I, I just, I think it was cool. It was a little, I don't know, sort of the, the hand wave at the end of it's a little bit disappointing, yeah, but it was, um, it was a cool, cool ride up until that. I would have liked it better if they just killed off the hundred elfins. Cause it's like, why not? Yeah, you're never going to, you're never going to have 300 people on screen in this show. You wouldn't have right. 300 people on screen in freaking Star Wars, you know? Like you're not going to do what it. If, yeah, but what if they but, killed? Uh, what if Tur- Tony Verducci is one of the guys that got killed? Uh, what uh, what messed everything up? Who? Who? Who's this Tony talking about? He's got a two out of three chance. <laughs> no, but like you know the um, the Star Trek Voyager episode where they uh, where Neelix goes off to live in the cat asteroid or whatever. They had basically everyone on the crew put on outfits to just pretend that there were more people working on like on Voyager because you know you never see everybody even right in like a, 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 mm-hmm. a relatively high budget star trek show you never see everyone who's on the ship so just kill maybe off the motion people. picture okay yeah. well you don't know how long the series is going to last you have to dole out the deaths you know you only get x number of deaths per year yeah. and still have a feasible population <laughs> by the end of the you series. can't have a hundred you know, mark that that show aired fourth <laughs> so if they came out on the fourth episode just like look we killed a hundred people oh you'd be in uh yeah, I would be super into that. Um, <laughs> just replace not, them with those Moonbase Beta guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not say, I mean, I'm not saying that that um, they absolutely had to, or that I don't like the hand wave at the end. But it's the the problem. The main problem I have is just the motivation of the aliens that they're like you. You are afraid too much, and that's why we can't let you be on our planet and that just doesn't work for me because they're literally doing terrorist stuff to their brains yeah it's like if i put if i put in your brain that everything got blown up and 100 people died and then said you can't be on my planet because you have too much fear that's not very fair is it (laughs) you know what i mean Uh, it's extremely rude they could have structured that differently and the fact is is they probably just didn't think much of it and they were just like yeah uh they don't like you because you're afraid that's it. You know, well, it was if they just, just put cones up around the planet and said, don't come here. This episode wouldn't yeah. be very short. <laughs> well, the cones don't really exist, well, unfortunately. Well, they don't they don't really have a choice in Moon Base Alpha. They just kind of goes. <laughs> Go with the flow. Um the troubled uh, spirit. There's a, a no, sorry, Mario. I just feel like uh, there's I'm, I'm no, that's, the I've said enough. Here. Uh the troubled spirit, another one which that could have been the Baylor episode. I would <laughs> uh, then I'd remember it, but this is the one with hydroponics. That drive yeah, murder insane. plant guy. Yeah, murder plant guy. Kind. Of. I thought this one was cool. Uh, sitar man. I the, liked it the, better in Force Big of Jim. Life. Oh yeah, Big Jim. Uh, Cummings or something. I don't know. No, Jim yeah, Cummings I... is the voice of Pooh. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, for me, I liked it better in Force of Life. In great part, probably because of the sitar music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I liked Force of Life better, but I did. I liked the look of the. I think the guy, wherever the ghost looked cooler than the Force of Life guy looked. Right. So Ian McShane well, better. No, no argument. He was there. he was an Italian, but, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Italian or Ian McShane. Yeah, yeah. this is where the right. So Ian is mas macho. But <laughs> and, music and and the plants. scene where he's like on the subway and slowly freaking out while the subway is like the lights are slowly blinking. That's one of the coolest scenes in the entire series. I think. Never thought to call that the subway, but sure, why not? Oh yeah, the <laughs> tube tube. Travel tube. tube. Yeah. I dig the travel tube. I mean, those those shots of <laughs> travel tube, same shot of travel tube, same shot of travel shot tube, of but travel now you know tube. it's going three times as far. Like that's cool. That's one of the cool aesthetics on this show. I wish they sure. showed it from the outside, like you know, like seeing windows and the little tubes on the surface going that would have been cool. Uh space brain foam party, yes or no, Mike? Foam party. Oh, definite phone party. Always phone up party. for a good phone party. Brian, your phone party. <laughs> Team phone party. <laughs> Space Brian. Yes. Actually, I'm the least likely to go to a phone party. Hey, I don't want to be a soggy mess, but I do like this phone party. Yes. <laughs> As we've established, I have been to phone parties and I love them. And I would go to one right now. Invite me to your phone party, listeners. It's, 
best um fate of an eagle in this episode it's turned into a ball yeah we don't see yeah. it happen but off screen woo. seeing the result <laughs> yeah, that's is great fantastic <laughs> and touching it a lot <laughs> yeah all around this is yeah and it has another episode another instance of a guy getting possessed and mashing his hands on the computer um <laughs> what's that guy's name kyle or something I'm just throwing kyle. names out kelly <laughs> Kelly, 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 Kelly. Kelly. not Kelly. You know, good old Kelly. Everybody knows Kelly. Not Kelly. He's my favorite. No. <laughs> How are we supposed to go on? Uh, yeah, it was great. See, now we're um, in that run of like higher production episodes because the Infernal Machine mm -hmm. and Mission of the Darians feel like the biggest episodes of the series. Although Isn't Shane Rimmer is Kelly. Shane. Uh, he was in a lot of like Bond movies man. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say that. Um, we didn't go into it when we talked about the last enemy, but I still disagree with the the uh, additions to this and that that end that make the end more violent. Like I think that this would be better if they just went through the space brain and didn't kill it because it was totally unnecessary. Nobody wants to kill it. the space brain, but yeah, what can but you? They do? did, <laughs> but yeah, what well, the writers have deemed it so. So uh, for the infernal machine, is is Gwent a villain or just a misguided AI? I think he's a villain. He's kind of a jerk, right? He is he's a jerk. I didn't say he's not a jerk. <laughs> is there a lot of uh, Conan yelling in this because he had to speak to the sky, to the disembodied voice of Gwen? So he's always There's like one or two really uh -huh. good scenes of yelling, <laughs> but not just that concentrated yelling from the one where he's stuck on that planet uh, being missing Link. Okay. Yeah, Jeez. this is a weird episode for Conan. Missing Link, not because... the caveman episode. <laughs> yeah not the caveman episode why didn't Gwen say and bring over your youngest Alphans so that person can be my next companion so I don't have to look for another one because then they get Jared <laughs> I mean they should have just given him Winters I was going Labyrinth again <laughs> yeah give him Winters because he wasn't doing much <laughs> yeah or anybody give it yeah give him what the the baby from Alpha Child give him Jackie mm -hmm. <laughs> little Jackie um little Jackie yeah. Yeah. little Jackie's gone right he should be a, bopping around on. I mean, he's, he's a baby. He was still. alive. He too. Oh, yeah. They That's gave true. him back at the end. Um, yeah. Maybe he's two years know, this old. There's another one that was frustrating to me because it didn't make sense to me that Koenig was just so absolutely um, combative with uh, <laughs> with uh, Gwent. We well, kind of went like, along. No, with I insist. A lot too. Yeah, he gave. He almost gave him supplies, but then he smashed the supplies, and also he had. He was like, attack now. I think he's blind. And then all those ships got blown up because Koenig said attack. So um, this is this is a weird one in the uh, Koenig's uh, on Koenig's record to me. OK, this might be like Matt was blinded by that set and the voice yeah, of no. Leo McKern and <laughs> forgot about That's the any thing. other problems. <laughs> it's great. I love I love the set. I love, you know, his voice, all of it. You know, I love how like, when Leo's on screen, he's so understated because he's dying, and then the big booming voice of Gwent comes in. Yeah. <laughs> and the the absolute weirdness when the companion's funeral, he keeps forcing everyone to say more say stuff, more and then he just screams, this man you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just so weird. Is it as weird as Mission of the Darians, which also I was blinded by the sense, no. of course. Darians is weirder. <laughs> <laughs> Our, our oh, Snow everybody's Pierce favorite episode. line from everyone's favorite line from Mission of the Darians. Two tons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that still doesn't. Which, by the way, up against Mark, Mark. You didn't call out. Uh, you didn't call out Aubrey Morris as the leader of that that priest who was uh, sacrificing the people to oh, the, the Mad Max guy. Yeah, that was Aubrey Sorry, Morris. He was in the toe cut. He was in uh, uh, the Prisoner. Uh, he was in. Um, Crap. Uh, he was in the Wicker yeah. Man. In fact, uh, he was in. Uh, he was also in Babylon Five years later as an older guy. But I like that guy. He turns up in weird things. He always plays some eccentric Englishman. <laughs> I think I too think much I, of the uh, trivia in that episode went to the wig. Oh yeah, All he's the right wig. there. I think I just missed. I think I just missed him and went for the guy next to him by mistake because I had so much stuff to do <laughs> for that episode. But yeah, I see him and I'm like, damn, he was in well, Clockwork so Orange. Had to call out Aubrey because. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good Wicker Man. He was in My Girl Two for some reason. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Really? Wow. Yeah. Is he still around? <laughs> he might be. Uh, looks like. 
No, 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 no. He's been dead for uh, nine years. But oh, okay, you know, he had. I was going to say almost Sonny's long going running on show. twenty years old. Bordello <laughs> of blood. Ooh, I remember Bordello that. Bordello of blood. Flashback. <laughs> nice. Good stuff. But yeah, also Darian's just yeah. The, the, other than the wig, there's just so many people in that episode. It, it, maybe that is the most epic episode. That or War Games. War Games because of the carnage, and this one because it just <laughs> feels. I mean, they're trying to make it feel as much like a world as they can, which they get a cheat because it's a really, really big ship with not that many people. So, <laughs> yeah, this uh, well, this is the thing is that it has it has the uh, world building that Death's Other Dominion has, but also has the lavish budget like War Games has. So it's kind of the uh, model. The Daria was a cool model. Yeah, very cool. And also the Infernal like Machine. That. We're in, we're in prime model territory here. Yeah, but uh, is there a uh, docks with? Is there a model? Daria. Does a, does uh, hmm? Master Replicas or did Eagle Moss do a Daria uh, model? I feel oh, like you'd be more likely so. to see a Gwent. <laughs> I've only seen fan built models of some of these ships, like the Ultra Probe and stuff. I've never seen a commercially available one. I mean, it is kind of a neat show, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's got a, a wealth of things. The uh, the Discovery clone that they use like five times in different alien ships. <laughs> yeah, I would buy it. I know one will recognize it. Mm -hmm. Gwent. Gwent was put the Gwent on my trippy. shelf, and if somebody be like, "How the hell does that thing work?" I'd be like, "It." Does. I don't know. <laughs> it just yells a lot. Um, it's got spinny wheel, space drive. We don't understand how it works. It'd be great if he said that line. Like, it's got spin. I've got spinny wheel space drive. I don't know. <laughs> um, Mike, yeah, Joan Warren. Collins. Oh, Joan Collins. Sorry, I was moving along. So go I ahead. Just said, yeah, Collins. I was gonna say jo Joan That's Collins it. wearing a uh, wearing a costume so short she. Uh... Uh, never mind. I'll stop right there. Triggered Barbara, Barbara Bain, triggered Barbara Brain on it and made Barbara Bain get it <laughs> negligee at the end. <laughs> so, you know, it's weird. Man, I don't know. 70s was weird, wasn't it? Mike, mm. I was going to ask you about Dragon's Domain first, actually. I'm curious your take on Dragon's Domain. You know, it. Uh, I thought it was just another another good episode that really highlights some some cool uses of you know the the space 1999 tech right with the um kind of the 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 different parts of of the eagles and stuff attached mm. to different kind of ships and things like that i thought that was way cool yeah that was cool sure. um I, I was asking you first mike because I, I think our assessment was a little bit different than the normal take on this episode and mark i'm going to agree with what you said which is this is the best two minutes of the series surrounded by <laughs> some other stuff the worst rap <laughs> the worst 37 minutes of it however long 50 I 52 minutes i made a co-worker watch the uh the two minute scene uh last week what did they say they thought it was great of course it's a great <laughs> scene i did <laughs> i just um i just out of context like, well, it's even better <laughs> I just made the point that we found the flying spaghetti monster, and that's the, the or that's his origin. That's where I argue <laughs> with the you. origin went, story. Yes, that's exactly. where I argue with you. I went space death octopus, but you know, it's it's a worthwhile argument to have. Oh, yeah. what? Because the show's got some Italian producers. You got to go like you know, spaghetti oh, monster. Yeah. What? <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> Who's Americans eat now? spaghetti too. <laughs> I am not. I've actually made fun of the Italians more than I absolutely. I have way more than I have any right to. And I do apologize to Italy. <laughs> <laughs> also, in terms of reusing Alpha Tech, they also had this little flashback that took place a few years earlier. And so we had to reuse some uh, jackets, I think, <laughs> mm -hmm. and some other sets and pretend that this. And, and of course, we um, I don't know if Mike had heard this, but the uh, they reused the uh, uh, M's set at mi6 for commissioner uh mm. should have been commissioner simmons but was commissioner yeah. dixon yeah that would have made me like, look at the like set and like, this looks very familiar <laughs> yeah um well this is one of those where yeah like matt said that the it didn't need the big giant flashback just like um what was the episode that didn't voyager's actually have return. the flashback voyager's return didn't have a flashback because it didn't need a flashback in this one it it was this huge rewrite where uh martin landau did not want uh, Nick Tate as Alan to have the role of the uh, what was the Italian Hero. guy? Tony yeah, Chilini. the hero. 
is it you know it he was just like went and hastily rewrote it and it feels like it was hastily rewritten and a bunch of there's a bunch of uh character you know they have to do a bunch of info dump about the character because we've never met the character before which i'm sure was not in the original episode worst um, case of poochie syndrome as i think i said <laughs> yeah if i didn't know maybe if i didn't know that that i would be a little bit easier on this it just really kind of feels like a hastily rewritten um thing and and this whole thing where they just go into the the into m's office to get fired and then the voiceover says but they were all reinstated hmm. so it's just there's no you know <laughs> there's no consequence of that uh, light case of firing there, there's a whole thing where basically no, nobody believes that he saw an alien but the only explanation if the alien didn't kill those people then he killed them so it's not like he gets court-martialed or anything they're just yeah they have to lock like him up just, or let him go yeah they instead they just whisper behind his back oh he's crazy <laughs> it's just like that's not i don't know it's it's got some it's got a bunch of holes in it just like the, all those people that the brain ate anyway we missed, met the finish line of these was testament of arcadia <laughs> which may be watching in production order um it i was hoping for something more epic which it kind of is and kind of isn't um it has i this guess epic feel to it i think because it's a big another big idea episode and it really kind of brings home the notion that something weird's going on with the moon's presence out there in space this is the other like one destined to come there like i said right. children yeah. in time this is one where i'm just like man battlestar did it so much better 30 years later that this one that unfortunately takes a bit away from this episode <laughs> Although the yeah, Freddie Mercury not, guy was cool. I at least feel like it didn't have any glaring holes in it, except the fact that it was way too easy for these clowns to take a hostage. And uh, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like yeah. they really, ex they didn't really explain their position very well, except for just to keep yelling, you don't understand it, people. Well, they didn't understand. We and didn't understand. They got away Maybe with it. Problem. Yeah, and they got away with it. And Koenig said... That it was cool because they got away with it, basically. <laughs> I don't know because that the moon started moving again, which meant they don't need three years of supplies anymore. Um, so when when I was a kid, I remember this, and and didn't they introduce the planet Arcadia as being like the furthest reach of the of the universe or the the planet? Like like they sort of had some exposition in there that like this is as this is as far as we can go. This is the edge of the universe. If I did, is that, mm, or am I misremembering? I don't, that? I don't, don't okay. remember that description of I, that. I'm definitely, that I could, could be misremembering that, but I know like right after this episode aired as a kid, like within like a year, we took a, a vacation to Acadia National Park <laughs> in Maine, <laughs> nice which place. ironically I'm, I'm in right now. And I just remember okay. thinking to myself like Acadia and sort of the British slash, you know, New York, uh, pronunciation of Arcadia sounds a lot alike. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, like, here we are, man. This is what the this is what they named that planet after the the furthest reaches of. Uh, well, Mike, United will you States? go down the street there in Arcadia and, and go look for the testament on written on the side of a building somewhere? <laughs> in, maybe in Sanskrit. <laughs> in Sanskrit. Well, it's, it's funny because I mean, uh, from Death's Other Dominion, Ultima Thule was like Latin for farthest object. <laughs> so right. it's mm -hmm. just. Do you think guys think this would have been better if after this episode that the moon had just sort of bounced off of a wall and gone in another angle? <laughs> like in the Truman like, show where he his Boop. boat bounces like off in... of the wall. Yeah, no, it goes through the wall, actually. <laughs> like, I was just thinking like Pong, but yeah, boy, that works too. <laughs> well, I think it had an epic feel to it. I think largely they did some good music choices. They had a couple pieces of music yeah. and a lot of voiceover from Koenig and the kind of Gave it a little more gravitas. I mean, it kind of sold it a little more, at least to me at the time. I don't know, maybe. See, I like the needle drops. As well. I didn't like the the voiceover, and I, I think in this or Dragons, I was just like, do it without the voiceover. We don't need it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And some of the voiceover I, didn't make sense. It's like we'll never know what Luke and Anna saw in the caves. How do you know they even saw anything in the cave? <laughs> <laughs> Who stopped to explain this to you? No one. I mean, it could be they just hate everybody and just want to be alone, and they just <laughs> that's their whole scam. They're just like, well, new romance. Like, maybe we could survive without all these pesky Americans. Well, they're the two most well-rounded people on Moonbase, so, you know. That's right. 
Well, <laughs> you've lost your language. Opposites language attract. Expert maybe your, maybe um, that's what happened in the cave. Yeah. On that, on that table. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. These skeletons it, are turning I, me on. It would be really fun if they just, at the end of the series, they just flash to that planet and they're just dead. <laughs> but, you know, obviously that's not happening. <laughs> um, I, I, I like, I am a big fan of sort of slow to sit down and think about it, just contemplate the universe type things. And that's what I liked about Black Sun. And I like that here also. I like that it at least gives you something to think about that isn't just nonsense like collision courts. <laughs> it's just like there's there wasn't really anything. Just fate is just another word for writer the writer's will. You know, it's just like that anything that's like fate or destiny is just like the writer they wrote it that way. But you know, yeah. this is at least I don't know. The the idea the idea just the, the sheer idea that people came from somewhere else, whatever happened to those Arcadians is at least interesting and worth thinking about. Well, to uh, yeah. cap this one off, I want to kind of extend the regular question. Um, maybe uh, I'll, I'll go first so you have a moment to stew on it, but you tell me what your favorite episode is, basically, if you want to choose one. But I, I want to know which one has the most sci-fi fun for you and which one has the most existential dread for you. So favorite, that's kind of hard for me to just shoes you know i think that last end of the season really was just a sweet spot so i think i'm gonna go with the darians as my favorite and then give space brain the most sci-fi fun for me Hmm. phone party and the space brain itself that's just that's i i'm not thinking dreadfully about now i don't remember what score i said when we did or what percentage i said when we did them but you know looking back at all the episodes in my hand here as a deck of cards i'm like space brain was the most fun and yeah i keep bringing up black sun so this that's just gonna have to be the most uh existential dread episode for me so that's my triptych mission of the darian's best space brain most fun black sun most dread i'm gonna say my favorite is uh death's other dominion um you did say that on the episode i did (laughs) say that on the episode and i'm still saying it still favorite um most fun probably the last sunset and i think most dread i'll probably be alone on this but i think most dread was war games because it was just wall-to-wall dread i think some people share that it was, it was fake dread i guess is the, the yeah the, the end rebuttal, of it but... the end of it it was retconned dread but i mean every that's every episode of this right there's all they always just uh continue on with their deal after they're done right so brian you want to choose your three I'm kind of surprised Mark didn't choose Guardian of Puri as most dreadful because I think he'd said that he didn't like the idea of like having all control arrested away from you and just kind of. Yeah, but I mean, war <laughs> games is like everyone's dead. So that's probably <laughs> scarier. A hundred people. Everybody's dead, Dave. Yeah. Um, Every, most people are dead and you have no control over the situation. So, yeah. Well, let's see. As far as dread goes... Um... I, don't know, I think I probably have to probably have to chime in with Black Sun again because it is like seemingly an un, unescapable thing, even though people pass through black holes all the time, science fiction, and they're just <laughs> fine. But <laughs> the way it was set up, it's like last ditch effort, gonna put up this dome. We're gonna see if it's gonna work, maybe, but the whole episode was kind of like that. Um so I find fun, I'd probably say like the last enemy because just spaceships <laughs> spaceship lands right next to starts shooting at other spaceships and i just i kind of had fun with that and then there was a moon buggy scene and we got that going and i just liked all the space spaceship tank. action space tank exactly um i don't know a favorite episode overall I, I i still have a soft spot for voyager's return for some reason just the idea that the the um Earth sent out this probe, and, and and every week we find out, oh, there's another survivor of another probe we sent out. You know, there's, you know, Brian Blessed, there's a, whatever. Um, and the probe. And the probe. This is like the <laughs> a probe that was not manned for a change. It was extremely dangerous. It posed a threat. Oh, it did some crap to the Sidons, and they're mad. And on top of all of which, it was like, we could have this, like, you know, 
secret German rocket scientist on board that no one seemed to have recognized. <laughs> I just thought that was a little, little bizarre, but <laughs> it's like how many other secret people are on moon base alpha? It seems like it's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like the village. You send your spies there. You don't <laughs> want anybody to talk to ever again. <laughs> well, this is the show he did after the prisoner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike, you want to toss out a three? Yeah, I do. I think um, I think Earthbound is my favorite. I think it's probably the best, you know, the most, um, I don't know, maybe complete episode from from beginning to end. Uh, for me, it's it kept me interested right up until uh, right up until they get that call. Koenig, Koenig, <laughs> come get me. He's just like, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, but I like that. I think I think I'm going to go. And I and I'm with you, Mark. I think War Games aired early. Um, I think they could have really raised the stakes if they had not done the hand wave at the end of that episode, and and really had some 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 real consequences there. Um, but I think that was probably the most sci-fi fun. A lot of pew pews, a lot of explosions, a lot of a lot of people going through really thin space glass. When that's all the glass <laughs> yeah. they have between. <laughs> you know life and and the cold death of of space um so sci-fi fun and then existential dread i think we're near unanimous if not i know i'm not alone with um black sun being that one because that really is just a just a you know 40 minutes of pondering death and two minutes of it worked Mm -hmm. and they even like i think they even like embraced a little you know, which reminds me of something. My daughter, when she sees like mission controllers, like either NASA or, you know, SpaceX or, or wherever, when they see, you know, the European Space Agency, when they see these folks celebrate and cheer the way they do, when what they're trying to accomplish actually works, she's like, shouldn't they be more confident than that? <laughs> shouldn't they, <laughs> should they be... <laughs> Like, why oh, are they boy. so surprised it's working? But I kind of got that uh, that vibe from Victor in Black Sun when he was like, oh, my God, it, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're currently so, yeah, living so... through the moon lander landing on it, sort of tipping over, getting roasted for that. Yeah. And uh, what I understand, it still is considered a success, but I don't know a whole lot about it. The Japanese yeah, one it's... landed upside down and it was supposed to... It's it's still working now, and it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to freeze over yeah. lunar night. So, the, yeah, the very first, the second headline on it says: first U.S. spacecraft on moon in fifty years tipped over and face planted near a crater." You know, it's like <laughs> but, <laughs> that sounds like America. <laughs> but thumbs clearly, it up, man. But uh, apparently, it still is able to do its do its thing. Plus, you think. know, and, and and here's another thing. Maybe I'm wrong on this, and I'm 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 happy to be, but. You know, when people start getting all their like America's back on the moon, like it's not. It's this company that yeah. did it. There so a very there's, a distinct, logo there's a distinction there. Dis- yeah. There's a distinction there, I think. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a tennis player winning a major tournament, people being like, America. And I'm like, no, that's this person and their team doing it yeah. if you want to wave the flag for that by all means but i mean it's not like fan, it was a... like it's my team and you have nothing to do with that team <laughs> yeah well yeah we anything, won they may have were you out there you know they may have um probably if nasa just had the budget of like the tax breaks given to nabisco in a year they probably would be able to do it themselves you know what i mean this is just yeah it is indicative of the system being kind of broken and nasa got a ton of funding when it would make russians look bad in 1968 um, and that's not a great priority to have. However, uh, I don't know. Maybe uh-huh. that did destroy them inside, and <laughs> that's the whole reason the Soviet Union collapsed. I don't know. I'm End not result a was cool. political, not a real political person. End result was great. Um, we we've, we've gotten technologies and things like that out of it. Um, maybe a little too much plastic, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's um, I don't know, man. Um, it's it's not going to be an I don't know if it's going to be an exact science during our lifetime, which uh, I don't know if that's kind of more exciting or sad, but it's maybe a little of both. Well, at least none of them are fueled by 
fatal fields of weird radiation so far. So we got that going. True. No Queller Drive. <laughs> no ex Nazis. <laughs> right now oh, uh, now okay <laughs> <laughs> oh wait oh, oh there's elon musk probably counts as a nazi anyway um well, now you can't say x but anyway oh, you, oh, or you do say uh-huh, x, x nazi yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so sort of preparing for i've never my uh star trek original series viewing has always been totally chaotic so sort of to prepare for um space 1999 season two i watched some of uh season three of star trek directly um that was interesting never seen you get your freddie freiberg around (laughs) yeah never seen spock's brain before that oh no that's a great one interesting one (laughs) i don't know why would you want to get a pre-soak of freddie freiberg (laughs) it's for research uh, (laughs) curiosity plain and simple (laughs) you know um uh, does anyone have a boom, I have a picture of him here somewhere with the oh, I don't know what he looks here. like. I guess that's gonna be in our chat, but <laughs> uh, here um, it comes. This is him and this is him on September 13th, 1999. Oh as taken by me. With a questionable response on stage. Oh, he's he's <laughs> quite elderly there. Okay. Yeah, but, I don't think he's with us anymore. Yeah, I was <laughs> gonna wrong. assume he's probably not with us anymore. But was yeah. that the specific instance where he gets booed by uh by the audience for uh trying to explain what he did um he like i said before he he did not get like a booing i think he just kind of kind of got a frosty silence from a lot of the audience yeah. members who just thought he killed the show <laughs> but yeah uh, that might have fact that's johnny else. burns sitting behind him on the uh on the stage oh, neat. Um, he was there he was fun I mean, I'm sure he got booed sometime, but maybe maybe it was Star Trek related. I don't remember. I can boo at you now. Boo! <laughs> hey, <laughs> I didn't kill this show yet. Yes. <laughs> maybe I'm helping to kill it. Maybe somebody's yelling at this podcast. I mean, if if somebody's listening to this episode specifically, they're just like, "This is the last straw." This recap episode. Enough of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is our clip show. That's it. This that is was our, giving you uh, one last chance. This is just shades of gray right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was I was trying to dig for that. Yeah. So I got uh, a couple of messages from John and and Earl who couldn't be here. John said uh, his favorite episode was Black Sun, but I didn't get any more details huh. than that. And Earl, I mentioned earlier, said please erect a uh, a bubble port for paul moreau and his space rooms for me <laughs> and of course yeah. those guys were on our episodes for those episodes if you want to hear their uh, yeah. deeper thoughts on those so yes they, those are the episodes they did this got some thunks out and, on uh, last sunset yeah <laughs> any final thunks y'all want to have well i'll miss um uh, all of our recurring characters who will be gone um wait I'll miss what Sylvia they're gonna Anderson. go they're gonna be gone. Well, you get to trade in for a Catherine Chanel. We'll see how that works. Several of them. <laughs> yeah. With weird sci-fi sideburns. Oh, we're jumping the timeline here. Okay, I get it. <laughs> we're in we've between. Done, we've done I'm really excited now. for season two. <laughs> we're in the slipstream here. <laughs> the quicksand. <Yeah. laughs> Mike, do you like fail. season two? Maybe it's a spoiler. I, well, I mean, I I I I like season one. Um I still think that <laughs> Space 1999 has a lot of the coolest elements that, um, you know, really, really some of the moments, like, like you said before, it has some of the two best two minute sequences of, you know, of TV of its era, I think, or at least of, you know, how my childhood remembers it. Um, you know, so I, I've, you know, I, I'll watch season one again at, you know, I don't, I don't need much of an excuse to do it. It's, I think it's a rip roar and good time. And, uh, just kind of a lot of psychedelic fun, and uh, you know, you'd, if you'd asked the sexiest episode, I think uh, I think that would have been. Uh, I think that's been asked and answered, and we can we can. Oh yeah. That one. <laughs> um, right. But uh, season two, like I think season two is is in a lot of ways it has a, um, maybe some more maturity to it. It has sort of established, uh, established an established set an established premise you kind of know what you're getting yourself into uh you know early on in it it and i i i don't i i enjoy season two also it's just it's just different that's a lot of people's Mm -hmm. take on it they're just like almost two different shows and so you can enjoy them equally 
Well, we will be getting to that in April, folks, just if you're wondering. Take a couple weeks off. Well, we're not taking a few weeks off to record. You don't have to tell them. I just did. So come back in three or four weeks. That's what I'm telling you. Them. That's what I'm telling them. (laughs) Yeah, just think about about how we have an episode that we've already done that we're keeping from you and get angry and then maintain that anger. Unless you're on our Patreon where you'll get it much sooner at Podcastio Podcastius. There, sorry. That was just a good way way to plug it right then and there. Okay. Um, But before that, yeah, I was going to say before that, Mike, do you have anything to plug? Uh, Mission Log, the Orville, as well as the Roddenberry Podcast Network. You can find us at Mission Log uh pod excuse me uh patreon.com slash mission log join there join our discord join the conversation with us we have live events all week uh where we talk about the orville and we're running through season four just coming up on the end of that star trek voyager right now season four uh got two more two three more seasons of that to go and uh hopefully we'll be looking at some other shows here pretty soon so expanding the palette of kind of star trek adjacent sci-fi that we can look at are we getting mission log buck rogers tell me we're getting vision log buck rogers (laughs) (laughs) because i think morals means messages i think of buck rogers oh yeah (laughs) kill gerard (laughs) well yeah i never saw any of it until we did a that pilot for matt's other podcast i flipped a coin by the way on this one it came up space 1999 what was the other side? Buck Rogers. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, maybe we should, maybe we can still do wow, that. What a coincidence. <laughs> Another two seasoner with very different two seasons. Even yeah. Though, that's even that's though strange I've parallel kind of, when you think about it. <laughs> I've been soft pitching like the Logan's run TV show, the Planet of the Apes TV show. But we'll, we'll see what happens. So when uh, Jessica and I went out to the Saturn Awards a couple of weeks ago um, mm-hmm. and worked the red carpet there and Seth, McFarlane got a Robert Forster, you know, career achievement award. And he goes out there and he does this speech. And it was just crickets, man, for most of it. Uh, but at one point he goes, um, oh God, I can't, I just drew a blank on the actor's name. The guy that played the president in uh, Clear and Present Danger. Um I can't think of it, but but he said a lot of people think the pinnacle of his career was when he played the president in Clear and Present Danger, but we all know that it was when he played Ren in the TV series Logan's Run. <laughs> and it was crickets, man. <laughs> like, and he goes, really? In this crowd, you're all frauds. You're Donald, all frauds. <laughs> Donald, Donald Moffat, who I That's definitely it. looked That's familiar. it, Donald Moffat. Oh, Moffitt. he was in the thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I remember him from that show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't so know yeah, that Logan's, Logan's run, run the series, man. That'd, that'd be a great one. I didn't know that series existed until kind of recently. And oh, then really? I watched a little clip from it. I was like, ah, yeah, <laughs> nice vibes. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's not i mean how could it be we know that the planet of the apes one isn't going to be as good as that movie either you know <laughs> that, that two was, tv that shows that leaned of. that leaned into their stock footage quite hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah what, what was the first tv series that was as good as the movie was it fargo in like 2020 or something I mean, yeah <laughs> oh man no it had to be delta very... house voice to bottom sea kind of counts doesn't it <laughs> Yeah, because it was a film before it was a TV show. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Mash probably. I mean, all kidding aside, Mash was probably. That's yeah, a good one. Different flavors, but both good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe uh, Alien Nation. I don't know. I don't remember much about the movie, but I watched the whole series when okay. it was on. Anyway, we're just shooting uh-huh. down your theory about Fargo. Yeah. So now we're just saying. Now we're saying names of shows. So it's probably <laughs> Highlander. <laughs> Uh, they names a podcast. Highlander. Okay, SD1. Hey, uh, Highlander, the series is better than any of the sequels, I think. Right? I mean, my, maybe the movie, too. <laughs> uh, we'll there's an argument on, on that one. There's an yeah. argument. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, anyway. Say the name of podcasts instead of the name of movies. Let's speaking of saying the name of podcasts, uh, we're podcast 1999. Uh, you can find us, you can support us as mentioned earlier, patreon.com slash podcastio podcastius. Find other podcasts such as films and filth, the citizen gain of podcasts. Both of these two fine gentlemen have guessed on that show as well as they've guested on time enough podcast and 
Mark's brain's exploding. So <laughs> burning out way faster than usual. Uh, you can also see uh, listen. You can see the the link to listen to Luke Lo spoke on <laughs> Game Game Show. About? I rule field report. I don't know anymore. I told <laughs> Disney. Um, you know, stay tuned for season two coming soon. There's well, you a, said some names, and that's why I asked you to do Met- Metamorph will be a ponstus soon. Get morphin. Morphin time. Morphin time. Mighty morphin. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop this. Thank you all. <laughs>